Hi, Display Week. Welcome to Episode 5 of Movie Night with Nanosys, the Quantum Dot Company. I'm Jeff Urich, Director of Marketing at Nanosys. We've reached the final day of Display Week 2020. Today, the show is all about Quantum Dots, so definitely my favorite day of the show so far. And I hope you enjoyed all the sessions as well. I've been conducting some research on the use of BT2020 colors in Ultra HD HDR movies. Each night this week, I've been posting a new recommendation for a film that features a significant amount of visible BT2020 color, along with some analysis and my favorite scenes. Before we get started with tonight's film, I'd like to give special thanks to Vizio Smartcast for sponsoring this research and video series. The content featured here is available on Vizio Smartcast platform. I found that the new 2021 Vizio P Quantum X TVs are the best place to watch them since they deliver more BT2020 color gamut than any other TV that we've measured with over 85% of the spec. Now, on to the feature. Tonight, we're journeying back in time to a galaxy far, far away. We'll be watching Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. Released in 2019, this film closes out the nine-movie Star Wars saga, at least as it relates to the Skywalker family. I'm quite sure it's not the last Star Wars movie we'll ever see. Star Wars 9 was shot on 35mm film and transferred to digital at 4K resolution. It makes great use of saturated BT2020 colors as well. We see these colors in blaster shots, indicator lights in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon, and some cool screen user interface elements as well. Actually, this is one of the reasons I wanted to include a sci-fi space movie in this series. In my research, I found a really cool subgenre of BT2020 colors in these types of films. Movies like Alien, Blade Runner, 2001, and Star Wars all have really interesting ideas about what a future computer user interface might look like, and they all use BT2020 colors to express that vision. As with many sci-fi technologies, maybe this is something we'll get to see in the real world soon as BT2020 capable displays begin to proliferate. Let's dive into the analysis by checking the available HDR metadata. Once again, the mastering display primaries are set to DCI-P3 coordinates, but we'll see in the rest of the analysis that the movie uses a bit more gamut than that. We can assume from the mastering display luminance information that the film was mastered on a Sony BVM300 RGB OLED display. These are great displays and capable of delivering something like 80 to 85% coverage of the BT2020 spec based on po Sony's published specs. Additionally, Lucasfilm and ILM have disclosed that they use a specially hot-rodded RGB laser projector in their Dolby, their Dolby Cinema workflow. This projector system has effectively 100% coverage of BT2020. So we know that the Dolby Cinema release of this film would have been mastered with BT2020 in mind. Let's fire up HDR Master 8K and take a closer look at the data to see how much of that color made it into the home release. Here, we're looking at a plot of the peak color saturation of every frame in the film. Star Wars Episode Nine is almost two and a half hours long, so there are over 200,000 frames here. We're looking only at pixels in the 1 to 100 nit luminance range. This helps assure that we're only considering colors in the heart of the visible range, ignoring highlights, dark shadows, and many possible encoding errors. The average peak saturation across the, those frames is 106% of DCI-P3. The highest saturation of any frame in the film is 144% of DCI-P3. Like John Wick, it's a slightly more conservative color grade, but definitely makes use of BT2020 throughout the film. As you can see in the chart, the chart nearly every frame uh, has some content outside of P3. Let's watch a little bit and see. And we've got to start off with a space battle between the Millennium Falcon and some TIE fighters. The action's really fast, so let's pause to check out the red indicator lights in the cockpit. They're falling outside of P3. And again, for some cool green laser blasts. Next, let's jump into an X-Wing fighter in heat map mode. The yellow pixels here show portions of the frame that are over 100% of DCI P3 and into BT2020. You can see tons of saturated color reflections from explosions and laser blasts during the battle, reflected off of the characters in the cockpit. Finally, let's check out some cool sci-fi user interface design in BT2020 aboard a first order battle cruiser. Super saturated red, green, and cyan colors are helping alert these officers to the dire state of affairs as the rebel forces begin to win the battle. 
That's all for tonight, and this wraps up the final episode of this week's series. Please let us know what you think in the comments and if there are any films you'd like us to evaluate in the future as we continue this study. Thanks to Vizio, again, for sponsoring this work, and to FF Pictures for the HDR Master AK software we use to analyze these movies. Thanks for watching. Thank you.